So we really want to make sure that um, the education, training and personal development of every member of staff is of top quality and that people are proud to come and work in the NHS. And again, a very about the people. We want people to aspire to come into work in the NHS, for them to understand what a career in it means. Um, and that's going to be doing lots of work around careers, lots of work around looking at how we recruit people in, pathways, widening participation. And I don't think it's completely not there. In fact, I know there's some excellent practice, and Wolverhampton's a key example of some great work around widening participation. But I can say, as, I, you know, as I'm going across the country, that isn't everywhere, and we need to get that good stuff and make sure that we spread it. But we need to start young, and there's some views out there that actually you should start to get people thinking, or young people thinking about their careers, around the age of five or six. I mean, it feels a little bit early to me. I mean, I wasn't ready then, I'm sure. But, um, but, but they are, we have got to get people young and really get them to aspire to work within the health service. I think we're going to have a lot to do collectively as a system. Um, and, and we need to think about, it's not just about widening participation and getting people to become registered nurses or registered AHPs or doctors in fact. It's about saying how do we value the, and, you know, that, that worker and what do they mean to us. It's a web based link where people can put stories on their experience and I just think it's good just to keep listening and keep learning. But this scenario is just so simple really. And this patient had a good experience because, you know, they had a welcoming smile at the, the receptionist. They were helpful, they were relaxed and um, comfortable and friendly. And, um, and it's not difficult really to do, is it? But why are most of our complaints about these very issues? And if you look at patient complaints, it's, it's the softer side of stuff that's, that's often the problem. So I think, again, within your curricula, within education and training, using real patient stories, there's nothing more powerful, is there? And this real patient that said, you know, she'd had this problem with her foot, the doctor was great, and as a result, she felt more positive about managing the condition. Well, that's exactly what we're trying to achieve. We have got to keep improving, but we've got to understand what we're doing wrong. We've got to be given the space and the safety to learn how to get things right as we move forward. But there's some interesting data that doesn't exactly correlate so I think you all probably know about the friends and family test, the net promoter, would you recommend this to your friend or not? Well, my previous role was part of that, and I also did work around the pressure ulcer agenda. And actually, there wasn't a clear correlation between happy patients and low pressure ulcers. So I think, again, we aren't there with understanding this. Um, I think, certainly, though, we are going to be looking at things like HMSR, rates within, within hospitals, you know, sort of death rates and incidents that shouldn't occur and looking at those as markers of success. But we could still argue that's quite naive if you think of a mental health setting. Mm -hmm.